now printed in your bulletin. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is enduring, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us. So that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our gathering hymn this day is called, This is the Day, and I remind you that we don't want to be singing out loud, that's what we have our cantor for, but if uh, you want to mouth the words, say the words quietly, ponder the music, uh, whatever you feel like doing, we just invite you not to sing aloud.
To set the mind on the flesh is death. But to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the Spirit. Since the Spirit of God dwells in you, anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies, also through his Spirit that dwells in you. The word of the Lord. I invite you to stand now for the reading of the Holy Gospel. gospel. I love how it starts out with a parable 
of what the kingdom of heaven is like, how God's kingdom is alive in the world. And then Jesus gives us the specific, what does this mean? What does this mean? And I love this parable because there's no question about what Jesus is trying to tell us. No, it's called the parable of the sower. But as I look at this gospel lesson, I can't think, help but think, that this is really a parable about our extravagant, always loving, always giving God. Before I came here to Zion, I was the pastor in Burkittsville, and Burkittsville is about, oh, it's, it's pretty rural. In fact, most of my congregation was either active farmers or came from a farm family. So every single one of them, when I read this parable, could definitely relate to what was going on there. And I had one farmer, good old Charles Brandenburg, and every time I would read a parable that was about farming, he would come to me and say, I don't think Jesus was a very good farmer. He didn't think Jesus was a very good farmer because the way that, that Jesus farms is not very carefully. He doesn't sow in straight rows. He doesn't, he isn't careful where he plants. This is how Jesus farms. <laughs> Throwing those seeds wherever they land. Jesus doesn't care where his love goes. Jesus doesn't care who hears his word. Jesus' message is not just for those of us who stand in good soil. Jesus plants for everyone. And Jesus throws those seeds out there in abundance. That is who our God is. Our God isn't a God that stays within a certain plot of land and says, these are my saved people, these are the ones that I love, these are the ones that grace comes for. But our God throws his love out there exuberantly, abundantly, and everyone who hears that word find salvation in God. Now it does come back to what do we do with it once we have it. What do we do with that love and that grace once we have it? Bishop Tim Smith, who is the bishop in the North Carolina Synod, has been, had said this. He said, you can count the number of seeds in an apple. But you can't count the number of apples in a seed. You know, God's love spreads out there, and depending on where it lands, doesn't matter to God. Because God's love and God's grace and God's mercy is for everyone. Now, for those of us planted here in the church this Sunday who have come to church either here in person or you're going to worship with us online, I think we like to think of ourselves as that good soil. We like to think of ourselves as the ones that can hear the word and do good work with it. And I would think and hope that we were those people. But what are we doing to grow God's word abundantly in our lives? How is 
God's word being planted in this place, in Zion Lutheran Church, and how are we then able to be fruitful with it? How are you, as a baptized child of God, who has received the Spirit, how are you nurturing the word that has been planted in you? Where are you seeing God abundantly in your life? Where are you able to reap a harvest for God? I think we are challenged this week not only to say, are we that good soil that God has planted in, but also to say, no, God's love doesn't matter where it's planted because God's love can be fruitful anywhere and for anyone. God is not frugal. Jesus might not be a very good farmer, but Jesus is an excellent Savior. Jesus is a Savior who comes to save everyone. That word is planted and sown and thrown out there abundantly, not to be denied, but to know that no matter who we are, what we've done, where we've come from, how we've lived, that love and that grace and that overabundance of forgiveness is for all. Even me. Even me. And I think we can all celebrate knowing that that Love was sown by a farmer who's not frugal, but who is exuberant and extraordinary in his giving. There was a sign I saw in someone's home that I was visiting one day, and it said, Tell me what you plan to do with your one wild and precious life. Are we living wild and precious lives, and what are we doing with them? You know, that love and that forgiveness and that grace that God has sown in each of us should be used wildly. We should be going out and spreading that to everyone. But yet I think we're afraid. We're nervous. We're worried. We're afraid by what others will think or what others will fear, feel or will God be with us in our work? What if we make the wrong decision? God is always there. God is with us always. Mother Teresa had a dream that she was going to build an orphanage. And she went to her superiors and she said, all I have is three pennies and God. But this is the difference I want to make. And they said, you can't do anything with three pennies. She said, oh, I didn't say I just had three pennies. I said I had three pennies and God. And that makes all the difference. What are you going to do with what God has sown for you? And what are we going to do to help nurture that abundant grace and love that God has sown for the world? Our God is an extravagant, extraordinary, loving God who gives us everything we need to do his work in the world. And so today... I invite you to be wild, exuberant, extraordinary with what God has given to you and work to bring his harvest to the world. And all God's people say, Amen. Our hymn of the day today is, Lord, let my heart be good soil, and I invite you to stand.
of our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed, which are found printed in your bulletin. And I ask you, Christians, what do you believe? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. Gracious God, your word has been sown in many ways and places. We pray for missionaries and newly planted congregations around the world. Inspire us by their witness to the faith we share. Hear us, O Lord, your mercy is creating God, the mountains and the hills burst into song, and the trees and fields clap their hands in praise. We pray for the birds and animals who make their home in the trees, and for our lands stripped bare by deforestation. Empower us to sustainably use what you have given us. Hear us, O Lord. Your mercy is good. Reigning God, we pray for our nation's leaders. Increase their desire for justice and equality. We pray for our enemies. Bridge the chasm that divides us and guide authorities to a deep and lasting peace. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Abiding God. Care for all who are in need. We pray especially this day for Terry Dow, for Barbara Canode, for Pam Miles, for Jack Slick, for Nikki State, for Dwayne Stiles, for David Teach, for Ralph Young. For those who are named on our prayer list, and for those who we named before you now. For those who are doubting for new faith, for those who are worrying to provide relief, for those who are struggling to ease burdens, for those in fear give hope. Hear us, O oh God. Renewing God, revive your church in this place. Nourish and nurture the seeds you have planted, that we may grow as disciples. We pray especially this day for those on Zion's weekly circle of prayer, Kathleen Canoe and Sandy Canoe. Sustain the ministries here in this church, especially the ministry of kindergarten and child care and deepen our relationships with the wider community, especially those ministries who are supported by the ministerium, the food bank, and shepherd's table. Hear us, O Lord. Eternal God, we give thanks for all who have died. Comfort us in the sure and certain hope of the resurrection. Hear us, O Lord. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us now pray the offering prayer in unison. God of goodness and growth, all creation is yours, and your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. Water and word, wine and bread, these are signs of your abundant grace. 
Nourish us through these gifts that we might proclaim your steadfast love in our communities and in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our strength and our song. Amen.
the blood of Christ shed for you.
will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Our closing hymn this day is, You Shall Go Out With Joy. And so this is where um, you're going to need your hands to clap, because as we sing the chorus, it's the trees of the field will clap their hands. The trees of the field will clap their hands. The trees of the field 